Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is John Hammond, and welcome back to another YouTube video and tutorial. We are checking out some more stuff in our repository that we just created. It's, uh, I called mine Tutorials. You can obviously name yours whatever you'd like. Um, but it is pretty much just a repository right now that has nothing really in it, but we want to start to fill it with some stuff. So right now it just has a simple README that is a simple markdown file. But let's say we want to actually start to put some code in here. Um, let's do that. <laughs> well, let's say we're at least going to start to put, like, a generic, a template, uh, code. Like some, maybe, how about a bash script, for one thing. A bash script that we can set up to at least have multiple versions of this bash script, so that's why we're going to start with a template or a blueprint. But, something that will help set up other services or other software for us in the future. Because I've got a couple ideas of some some software and some services that I'd like to be able to set up, and I'd like to be able to automate that process and all the configuration and installation that we actually have to do. So let's start with the bare bone basics. Let's actually just get a template set up for us. But in our repository, let's go ahead and make that. Let's uh, make directory bash templates. Mm, do we want to call it bash template? I don't know. I don't know what we want to call it. Let's just call it template script. Template script. Okay. <laughs> so in template script, we'll have another readme. So in sublime text, I'll just say template script. <laughs> this code is a simple bash script. Oh, let's get some let's get some links in here in our markdown file just to make it like good practice. Bash. If I Google bash, okay, cool. We do get the first result to be some good stuff. Let's make that denoted in code, and then let's get a bit of a list down here for it. This is just simple markdown syntax for it. This code is a simple bash script that is used to be a general purpose... Oh. <laughs> I'll zoom in on this, by the way, sorry. Starting point and springboard. Springboard? Is springboard one word or two words? Whatever for future scripts to help automate the process of installing or configuring any form of software or services. The main script you run is, let's call it setup.sh. I want to make that a link as well to our setup.sh script. So now let's create that setup.sh script. Whoa, I just did save as. I didn't want to do that. Did I do that? Yeah. ls uh, rm setup.sh. Now we'll just create a new one setup.sh. Cool, and I have a header that starts for me just because I have uh, the file headers package installed with Sublime Text. Um, I think that's file header. Yeah, 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 yeah. So if you did install package, if you had that uh, the package control set up in Sublime Text, you can just do file header, and that would be the package you would want to install to set that all up for us. So okay, sure. Here we are. Here we are in Bash in our new script, and let's for one thing. Get some comments going. Let's get a little bit more information as to what we're doing. Template scripts. And I'll try and make this model after that markdown script. In fact, I'll take the same code, the same information from our repository and just throw it in there. Whoa, can I word wrap that? Wrap? Word wrap? Oh god. <laughs> I ruined it. I ruined everything. Yeah, there's got to be a way to... That doesn't look any better. I liked it better what I had before. <laughs> oh gosh. Turn off word wrap. Alright, fine. Alright, 
let's actually move on to the software portion of it. Let's let's create some variables that define what this is that we're actually trying to put together. This is all very general purpose, keep in mind, so all this stuff is going to be able to be changed later. So if for whatever reason we're trying to configure or set up a little bit of software, we're going to have variables that you as the user or you as the person installing probably are going to be able to want to change. For lingo and for jargon uh, purpose, <laughs> jargon purpose, if that's a thing, um, like for semantics wise and for, for context, I'm going to call these external variables things that you may change. Things that the user may change. That the user may change. I'll just keep this all on one line. And let's call that service. Actually, that's probably going to be an internal variable, right? Because internal variables are going to be things... If we're, if we're rolling with that mindset of external variables are things the user may change, internal variables are going to be things that the user probably shouldn't change. Because that's going to be what you set up. So right now, this is just going to be a template, right? And we're probably going to have dependencies and stuff that we need to be able to work with and install. Right now I'm going to make that an empty string. And just for readability, I think in our script we'll have some colors. And we can set that up with different different variables. I'm going to actually enable those colors. Since we're in Bash, since we're like the Linux console, I'm actually going to use the tput command. If you've never heard of that, you can man tput, read a little about that. Um, we can use it to actually set on colors. So I can use tput set foreground 1, and that will make it red. If then I think if I echo hello, now my you see the string that I echo out is in that color. And it's been reset because of my prompt, but we should be able to use that just fine. If I use the back ticks, I can use tput set af 1 will give us red. What is the other one? Okay, 2 is green. What else is there? And then, oh, three. Three is yellow. Okay. And then the syntax actually turn off color. So I'm going to say NC for no color. I'm just going to make that uh, SGR0. That's the syntax to turn off color. Cool. So the external variables, things that we don't want to change, I guess we don't have anything for right now. We don't, since it's, it's things that are going to be specific to configuring the service. Okay, now let's actually get down to more function stuff. Let's actually make it do, you know, things, right? So, we're going to want a main function, obviously, and that will be the start. That will be where it tells us, for one thing, let's have it display out our colors for us, and let's have it display the name of the program first, and then green. Setting up the service, or whatever it is that we're actually setting up for us. And then we'll turn off color. It's a little NC. And then we'll exit successfully if after we're done doing stuff. And since we're doing stuff, <laughs> just for uh, a template purposes, let's actually have a function that does stuff. And now, rather than using the dollar sign zero to the name of the program, let's actually make that the func name. That is a special variable in Bash that actually refers to the function that you're currently calling. So it's kind of cool. I just saw that doing stuff. I saw that on another video that uh, MetalX1000, who is an awesome uh, YouTuber. If you don't actually know him, check out youtube.com forward slash uh, MetalX1000. He's a really great Linux Linux guy. So that's, that's pretty much obviously the core of what it does. But 
since it's going to be able to do stuff over and over again, do other things, etc., etc., later on in the main function. But what happens if something goes wrong, right? We want to be able to make sure, at least be able to see it and stop our script if something happens that we don't want to go wrong, right? Let's put our do stuff back in there. So let's have a function like panic if something goes wrong. And what we'll do is we'll echo... Let's call it... Let's still put the function name because now we're panicking. And we'll say just something like fatal error aborting. And let's actually put that in red. Oh, red. Turn off color. And now we'll exit negative one. So our do stuff function will have multiple of these. Let's actually just kind of document what we have so far. We'll have multiple do stuff functions that do different things. And then panic when something goes wrong. We can use this in the script with Bash's uh, or syntax, these uh, two vertical pipes. So we'll know if one command fails or not. Easy enough, right? Yeah. Another thing that we're actually actually going to want to be able to do is actually install the dependencies. So if for whatever reason we actually do have dependencies, let's actually set those up. Just a baseline function that will actually install those. Install dependencies. And we'll just take that same echo statement. Installing dependencies. And that's just a simple app get call. Oh, actually, normally, we since we'd be running like a pseudo app get install, Oh, we're probably going to have to create a script that will verify, or a function that will verify if we're running the script as root, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll definitely have to create that. So, otherwise, since we're not going to call it with sudo, we, don't, we can remove that. Let's update, for one thing, and then following that, we'll use the bash syntax and after that. apt get pass in y, so they automatically accept yes, and then we'll send in our dependencies. And then we can we can actually use our panic our panic uh, function that we just created there. And we're using the dependencies variable that we created up top at the very beginning of our script. I'm sorry, I probably should have had this uh, all full screen this entire time. I'm sorry. Okay, so now we can install dependencies as part of our script in the main function, right? And... Da -da 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 -da. What else is there? Oh, right, 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 I'm sorry, that, uh, that verify root function we can set up for us. Just a little bit of documentation for one thing. Okay, um, function verify root. And that's just a simple if statement, right? Because we just want to test if the user is actually calling this as root. So if, bash syntax here, I'm going to use the string of UID, because we know in the terminal we can echo out UID. That should be zero if we are root. So if I sudo echo UID, give it my password, it should be, oh, echo UID, is that right? Sudo bash, echo UID, should be zero. Yeah, should be zero. If it's not equal to zero, then we will do, oh, I'm sorry, fi, to end our if statement, we can echo with the current name of the program, and then red 
You must be Root to run this script. No color. And I'll exit with a negative return code. So. Cool. Let's remove that extra space, actually. There you go. Make sure the user is running this as root. So we can put that at the top of our main function. Verify root. And we'll just say that before. Actually, do we want that to be a function? Because we don't know if we actually want if we're being general purpose here, if we're trying to be something that we can replicate this, we don't know if we actually want to be able to call this or not. Sometimes the script probably won't have to run as root, right? Let's leave it. Let's leave it. Yeah, let's leave it as a function and then still display later on. Okay. Now we can install dependencies and do stuff. That's pretty much all we need, I think. Oh, of course, we actually have to do have to call the main function, right? So main. And if we have kind of a pre-declaration of all the functions, just so we know what's going on, we can just pass in all the variables that we already have. Oh, I'm sorry. Also, in our verify root, since our, we're interpreting the user ID variable as a string, we should verify that this zero is also a string. So call the main function passing in all past arguments. So every function has a pre-declaration, quote unquote, of all the functions. Okay. Let's see what happens when I try and run this. Can I run this? Let's make this executable. Oh, gotta be root. Awesome. Cool. So now it's just updating and installing any dependencies, which we shouldn't have. Then we were able to see at the very top. Cool. Our doing stuff was doing stuff, and it actually gives our function name right there. And it says, okay, setting up the template, which would be whatever our service is. And then install dependencies would be installing dependencies with our function name there. Sweet. So it looks like our template works pretty well. Other than those weird, uh, those weird comments at the top there. Whatever. But that's pretty much all that we wanted to be able to do for now, because this gives us a good baseline to be able to work with any other functions or any other service or script that we're trying to set up for us. So, okay, cool. I got some good ideas, I think, for uh, services we can try and automate and build for us. We're going to be looking at Calry, a, a little honeypot. And I think I might do it with some other services like FTP or anything that you might uh, try to build and create, configure in a network that you're building. So, sure, hopefully we're good. Hopefully we're in a good spot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. But before we go, let's actually add our changes. And we'll put it in our global readme that we have some new code. Tutorial code. This repository is home to hopefully <laughs> all of the code and software that I produce for YouTube. Let's grab a YouTube link. Actually, I probably don't even need YouTube. I should learn to type, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, seriously, I should learn to type. Hopefully all the code and software that I produce for YouTube for use during any tutorial videos demonstrating how to set up and how to automate. Let's automate anything we deem necessary. Contains the following folders. 
and let's have our configure our template script, right? I'll make that a link and I'll make that bold. Link to it there. And that's it for now. I'll just take the same external for starting point of Springboard for future scripts help out the process any form of software services. Cool. I think we're good. So now I think that's all I need, right? Let's git add the new readme, and let's git add the entire template script folder. Now we can git commit, added script, added a template script for future services and software as our commit message. Git push to add this to the repository. Log in with my username. We should be good. Now if we fire up Firefox, should be able to get to bitbucket.org. Let's go to my repository there. I have to log in for one thing. Hey, cool, 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 cool. And the template script, I'll add a new line in that. I think. This is just me being a perfectionist, sorry. I tend to do this when I have a code in a repository. <laughs> okay, cool. So now our template script is now accessible from our repository. Oh, I will also bold that header. And now our setup script is available inside a repository and it should do everything that we've already told it to do. Cool. Looks like we're uh, ready to move on, guys. I know it took us a while, but we set up now a successful template script we can use later on in any other service or thing that we actually try to build and create for us, trying to automate the, the setup for. So, in the next couple of tutorials, let's do just that. Let's try and automate the configuration and installation of some services or some software we actually want to set up, like Cowrie. Awesome. Thanks again, guys. Hope you enjoyed this. A little bit of bash programming, a little bit of work with our repository and other cool stuff. See you soon.